Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson, Williams County's Mayor, and we welcome you to our show today as we travel around the county and have different conversations of the things that are going on or about to go on in the future. And today we have Ken Marshall who handles uh, an unbelievable amount of veteran uh, questions and concerns. Thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here. Yeah. Ken, as we get into the show, and you've been here many times, we certainly want to spend um, the better half of our show talking about some of the things we're going to do in the Veterans uh, Memorial uh, mm -hmm. Services that are coming up here. But uh, before we get to that point, let's let you tell the people a little bit about your background, where you came from, and uh, people forget that, and you've got a a wealth of talent and your resume is very long in working uh, and being involved with veterans uh, just about all of your working career and then mm -hmm. uh, we'll go from there and do a, tuple, a couple of the topics of your day-to-day -day job that when you're here for three days a week. Well I am served in the Navy for four years in the late 60s and early 70s and went to college on the GI Bill and after college I uh, went to work for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or the Veterans Administration as they're called, in their Veterans Benefits Division, which handles the compensation and pension programs that, that the VA runs. And stayed there for 30 years uh, and retired from that job. And about six months after retiring, this position came open and uh, it seemed like a natural fit. Well, you've done a great job, and, and as many people know, because you've been here, like I said, several years, but uh, your background, your expertise in working in the Veterans Administration, yes. to use your word, the old way, but uh, gave you a whole bunch of, of uh, acceptability with the men and women that come in here, and oftentimes it's, uh, it's the spouses and uh, the children of our veterans that you see. Not that we don't still see a lot of veterans, we see a lot. You know, if, if you were to look at your book of business, you're here in the administrative complex uh, Monday and um, Tuesday and Wednesday, three days a week, Monday through, Monday through uh, Wednesday, uh, eight to 12. Uh, certainly, uh, if you would give them your phone number, it's best that they call, set up an appointment and not necessary if they can catch you and you're not with someone else, but it's always good to do that. But after you do that, try to look in your book of inquiries that you have from so many different people. What are some of the, the larger percentage of questions that are presented to you uh, from the, the, the veterans or the spouses or the children of the veterans that come in? Well, to answer your first question. I'm in room 102 of the old hospital, the administrative complex, and I'm there 8 to 12, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And my phone number is 790-5623. Almost stumped you there. And you? an appointment is not required. You can drop in. Most of my business tends to be drop in. Uh, I, I do ask that whenever possible, come the first half of the morning, if possible, because some of this requires a lot of paperwork and we have to have time to do it. Um, but if you want to, people, it's good to call in advance so we can go over what documents and paperwork they will need to bring with them. And that's the most important reason to call beforehand so you don't come in without what we need. Uh, as far as what I do, uh, my primary job is to assist veterans and their survivors with navigating the VA claims process. Now I do other things also involving just answer general questions regarding uh, everything from veterans benefits to uh, military retirees dealing with um, their retired pay, uh, DFAS as a Department of Finance and Accounting or service I believe is what it stands for. But I get business related to that sort of thing too. Um, but primarily um, 90 percent of my job is dealing with representing veterans and survivors with, in their dealings with the Veterans Administration and obtaining benefits through the uh, Veterans Benefits Administration. Um, the VA has two basic monetary disability benefits or death benefits that they, they 
pay administer, and that's service-connected death benefits, which most people are aware of. If you get hurt in service, if you get injured, you get sick, uh, most people are aware that the VA does compensate you for those injuries. Uh, what people are less aware of, and what is probably 75% of my business, are their non-service-connected disability and death pension programs. Um, this is a disability benefit, or in the case of a surviving spouse, it's just payable if you're a qualified surviving spouse, uh, to wartime veterans and their surviving spouses. And it essentially is a need-based benefit. It's an, based on income and net worth, and it, it's for low-income people, but as with many programs, when it comes to income, there are ways that uh, to use the terminology I think Medicaid uses, you spin down your income. If, if, if it's being used to pay medical expenses, then it can be excluded. And essentially, uh, for people who have large medical bills and nursing home or something of, of that nature, they can have significant income and still, for VA purposes, have zero income and qualify for this benefit. Uh, and like I said, this accounts for about 75%, I would estimate, of my business. Generally, it's a, um, an adult child, uh, I'd say someone in our age group, usually, uh, who comes in with and tells me they have an aging parent, a World War II veteran father, or uh, a surviving spouse of a World War II or Korean veteran who is in their 80s and 90s and, and needs assistance, perhaps needs assisted living, and they're in a bind as to how to pay for it, and they're wondering if there's anything payable from VA, any assistance payable. And in many cases there is, uh, not always. Uh, it depends on the circumstances, but that's what I, I do. We can go over that, and I can generally t tell you, like we said before, I don't work for VA now, but I did, and I can generally tell you where you're going to, to fall in, in uh, eligibility. Uh, Ken, um, oftentimes I have heard uh, on radio, and we were talking about before we actually went on the show, uh, the charge or the fee for your services is zero. Right. You are paid by the taxpayers here in Williamson County. Now, the vast majority of your conversations are Williamson County taxpayers, but it's not exclusive. No, no. We take and try to handle situations from any of the surrounding counties. But we do hear about on radio, and I have seen some advertising, and this is not working against those people, but there is a charge or fee from these for-profit firms that advertise throughout our state whereas oftentimes the services that you can provide are equal or better and has a hands-on individual that's been doing it and that's all you do mm -hmm. other than some parades from time to time, which is uh, very, very important. But uh, I think it is important for our viewers to understand what Ken does here at the Administrative Complex on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday from 8 to 12 is a service that is provided and paid for by the taxpayers and there's no fee, no qualifying, he'll never ask you to bring your checkbook or bring money in to help pay for the services that he renders. Uh, that's part of the operations of the services that we provide here in county, in this county. Now, that's not true about every county across this state. No, no uh, most of the counties have somebody serving in this capacity. Uh, they don't all necessarily have a, lot, a background. Correct. Um, and that's where you, some counties fall short. Now some of the counties have some outstanding people. Uh, several retired VA employees uh, do this. Um, but far too many have people who are just, they come in and, want, and they mean well, they're trying to do a good job. Um, and the state provides training for them. Uh, but, you know, in this county, uh, and in several, and I know in Dixon County, before he recently retired, we you had people with extensive backgrounds in in the VA system. But like you said, with the with the, the private companies, uh, what has happened there, 
at one time it was an attorney, for example, could only charge $15 to represent a veteran on anything dealing with the VA. That was the law. And there was not, unlike the Social Security Administration, there was not a lot of business to, money to be made in VA benefits, so attorneys did not, or private companies, did not get involved in VA benefits like they did Social Security. Sure. And, but that has changed over the years in that they've taken those restrictions on charging people off. The courts have forced them to do that, which is, and with the aging World War II population and the, the wars that we've, the long running wars that we've had recently, uh, has increased the potential eligibility pool. Uh, so companies have, there's a cottage industry been springing up around veterans benefits. Um, and a lot of these, their financial advisors or insurance companies, uh, they will present themselves They'll appear to be a government agency. Their, their letterheads will have flags and eagles, and and, it, uh, and somewhere you might find in tiny print somewhere not affiliated with the government. But uh, but these folks are doing, or trying to do in some cases, exactly the same thing that <coughs> someone like me does. And we tell people, um, and the Tennessee Department of Veterans Affairs, a state agency, will tell people throughout the state. Uh, you never need to pay anybody to help you with <coughs> VA benefits. As some, there is somebody somewhere that will provide this service free of charge. Uh, let's let's kind of segue into some of the forms that are needed. Um, the DD-214. DD-214. Uh, World War II veterans would not have a DD-214, but they have military separate. I don't remember the form number, but they have military separation papers, so I, I, I try to for, you know, just use that phrase for the older veterans. And for general uh, knowledge, uh, the majority of the time that is a form, or in the case of the World War II veterans and prior, uh, there's, there's other documentation, but that's one of the forms that a person really ought to have in his, in his lockbox or right. in, a, in a special place wherever he or she keeps their, their deeds, their securities, their stock exchange, their car registrations, yeah. and those types of things, ownership, title of the car. Uh, if you don't have your 214, DD-214, how do we get it? Well, there are several ways. <laughs> and in a few cases with the, uh, you don't see it as much these days, but years and years ago, it, people would typically register their DD-214s with their county court clerk. Mm -hmm. And so we have like I said, that, that is not something that's commonly done these days. You don't find many veterans there uh, that register their DD-214s. Um, but, but there is a file uh, at the county here, and we can find look there. But uh, the more, tip, more common ways we get them, for any veteran who was a native Tennessean who entered the service from Tennessee and came back to Tennessee, and that's any branch of the service, um, the state uh, military archives at the Nas National Guard in Nashville has an archives and they, they keep all the DD-214s for all Tennessee veterans. Uh, and they pretty much have, it's rare that they don't have one. And now they will charge a veteran several dollars to, I can get them for free. So if you'll come to me, uh, and it takes about 24 hours to get one. Um, Another I, reason to call ahead. They, they will provide that, uh, those free to me. Um, and if they don't have them, or if you're not a Tennessee native or didn't come back to Tennessee, uh, we can go to St. Louis to the National Personnel Records Center and get one. Now, that takes uh, several weeks, but we can get one there, uh, along with any other military, if you want your personnel records, or people will come in and they'll want, uh, I want, I lost my medals, I lost my ribbons, can I get replacements? Yes, you can get replacements and, and I can handle that. Um, just one of the other things that, that we do here. You're a man of many talents, but a man who is greatly admired throughout our veterans community. Uh, recently, um, more than once in the last four to six weeks, I have spoke to some groups in the evening hours, and uh, usually the conversation centers around, I've been over to see Ken, he's helped me out. Uh, these are usually predominantly men, but there are a few 
women that are sprinkled in now. And we're seeing more and more of the women uh, that have been in the military served that are involved in the um, American legions and different branches. <coughs> I know also, just as a side note, there's a group of uh, veterans that meets at one of the uh, places in uh, in Cool Springs for lunch, mm -hmm. a hot dog and a Coke mm -hmm. every day. Uh, they meet over, I'll give a free plug here, to Costco on a certain day of the week, and uh, they sit there and reminisce and discuss and talk, and quite frankly, it's getting to be quite a, a large organization of men uh, that sit there and kind of reorganize the government and the military and probably a lot of other conversations we wouldn't want to touch on here. But uh, in this county, surprisingly, uh, there's a lot of veterans. There's a yes. lot of men and women that choose to come back and live in Williamson County. Um, and that's one of the reasons we do some of the special programs we do, <coughs> such as the Memorial Day Memorial services Day. coming up mm -hmm. to um, give respect to those men and women and their family. Let's talk about the Memorial Day service. Uh, first, I'll, I'll point out, yes, you're right. Anytime you get three or four veterans together, they're going to reorganize the government. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you're a veteran. I'm a veteran. I'm also in the political arena, so I'm used to that. I can promise you. But, yes, we, every year, the, the county sponsors uh, a Memorial Day ceremony service on Memorial Day. Uh, this year it will be on May 26, Monday, Memorial Day, at 10 a.m. in downtown Franklin at the Five Points, the Veterans Memorial Park in downtown Franklin. Um, a lot of people may not be aware, uh, the park is that small area in front of the archives building at, at Five Points. And I'm, I'm still amazed at how many citizens are not aware that uh, we do make available to the public the opportunity to purchase engraved pavers honoring uh, deceased veterans. And those are $65 a piece and we uh, sell them through my office uh, and they're sold. You don't have to be a Williamson County native. To, if you're if some connection with the county, if you have uh, any Williamson County uh, citizen who wants to honor their father, their mother, um, with their veteran um, brother, uh, we will in, put a paver in the in the park in their name. Um, and on Memorial Day each year, we dedicate all the new pavers that were purchased the previous year, along with the county provides pavers for any county residents who uh, die in the line of are killed in action in service. Um, and this year, for the second straight year, we will not be putting any new pavers in into that part of the park. And I'm, I'm this happy. is a good thing. But, uh, uh, but to anybody who wants to purchase a paver in honor of a deceased veteran, uh, just see me and we will take care of the paperwork on that. Like I said, they're $65. Because this show uh, that we're taping today will air pretty much at the same time um, that the Veterans uh, Memorial Day services are going on. You certainly couldn't purchase one to have it laid no, down. No, no, we. Year. I've already. For the 2014. I, they have to be purchased by the end of February. I, I put the order in in March, uh, but the Memorial Day ceremony. I don't want them to to make it appear as if it's just dedicating the new pavers. It is a Memorial Day service. I think service is actually as appropriate a word as ceremony. Uh, uh, conducted in honor of all deceased veterans, those who served in the military and are now deceased, and we remember and honor uh, all of those. And, and it's a, a very, I think, a very moving ceremony. It's, it's about, it runs between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, it runs a lot, once it starts, it starts precisely at 10 o'clock, and, and it, it moves right along. But it is a very moving ceremony, and I, I would like for, um, it, well, maybe I should differentiate between it and the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, we also in the, in the county have a Veterans Day Parade in November, which is a, um, uh, a boisterous, loud, joyous celebration of, of all men and women who wore the uniform or wear the uniform now. And we have, with marching bands and, and, and 
that sort of thing. Memorial Day is just the opposite. It's a solemn uh, remembrance. Uh, it's conducted in the very same vein as a military funeral. And I would highly encourage everybody to come participate in the program, bring young ones. I, I, like, to, I like to see the young people there. And, and um, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we have no problem getting the World War II veterans out and the Korean War and now the Vietnam veterans. Uh, but I would like to see the high school kids, the young kids come out and see exactly what sacrifices people have made that came before them so they can enjoy the things that they enjoy today. Well, over the years, um, certainly in the tenure you've been here, uh, of your working career here in Williamson County, uh, I think you've just put together a wonderful program from the opening ceremonies. We um, have the Williamson County uh, Parks and Rec Band that uh, mm -hmm. will be playing many of the military uh, songs mm -hmm. that many of us have grown up with and recognize. Um, there will be a whole period of, uh, the, of the posting the flags, posting the colors. Uh, there's just a, a wonderful atmosphere. I do encourage people that uh, plan on attending. Uh, the event starts at 10 and pretty much on time. Ken keeps things rolling. Thank you. Um, but bring your lawn chairs, bring some water. It tends to be a little warm. That's why we used to have it a little later in the day and it got so hot. Well, I would like to point, we will have about probably 250, 40 seats available. That, that is uh, correct. But we usually have more than that show up. And uh, this year, I think, uh, as an added plus, uh, down in our property management section, many of you have stop me when I've been in the grocery store or called into our office wondering where the, the cannon was. We sent the cannon out uh, at Five Points. It needed some, um, well, we were talking about as we get older how we need some parts replaced from time to time. Yes. Well, the cannon's wheels needed to be uh, fixed and we took it away about a month ago and it's in our shop now having the final, final coats a paint put on it so it should be back out uh, at five points here in the next couple of days secured down so that you can have the photo opportunities around the cannon and many 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 people yes. uh, have enjoyed that so <clears throat> we really do encourage you to come down and 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 see and pay dedication uh, to those men and women uh, that that uh, have 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 long since uh, left this earth and, and uh, we lost sev we've lost several veterans this we last have. year in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Several uh, well-known citizens in the community have passed away um, and sir, we do have, uh, their families have purchased mm -hmm. papers for them. We will be honoring, dedicating those papers. And I'd like to also point out with, with regard to the, when we mentioned the ceremony, uh, you mentioned posting the flags. I would like to point out to folks that those, those are U.S. Army soldiers that, from Fort Campbell, the 101st Airborne Division, that will be posting the colors. And I'm not sure their status this year, but I know in, in a couple of years past, the soldiers that were posting the colors had just returned from Afghanistan and had been in combat literally weeks before they were participating in our Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, in fact, one year, uh, one of their own had died, killed in action, and his paper was being dedicated. And, and the soldiers that were posting the flag knew the person who's, and had served with him just, just weeks earlier. So it, it can be, and it was very moving for them. I think it was, that program was more moving for them uh, than probably just about anybody there. And so I would encourage everyone to come out and, and, and be a part of this. And, well, it's it's not only uh, the right thing to do uh, by paying homage to our men and women uh, that have 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 worn the uniform and have uh, whether they've been overseas in one of the bigger wars or stayed at home uh, working in the military. Believe me, there's a huge need for that too. 
but I, I think it's the thing to teach the next generation and just show respect for these men and women. Uh, and it and it's a time I, I have come to uh, appreciate long before I became mayor and would attend the events. Uh, it's just a time to reflect on how how important it is for our military to stay strong so that we can enjoy, so we can have events yes. like mm -hmm. this and so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we do have here from the right, an election just uh, was completed to having those freedoms so that we can enjoy just voting, a privilege, although the turnout is oftentimes lower than we as politicians uh, like to see, we certainly like to see more involvement. The freedom is still there. You make a choice whether or not to vote or to vote. <clears throat> and 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 I would really encourage everyone to come out and, as Ken said, to um, bring your family if you can possibly do it. Ken, we've got about two minutes left. Uh, I may have overlooked uh, a particular item that you wanted to touch base on. Uh, again, I wish you would give your telephone number so they guys in the studio can put it up on the screen and, and if people are interested in calling you, setting an appointment, and then if I've overlooked anything, please Well, I, I would just like to encourage everybody to, as I tell people, it never hurts if you think you might be eligible or know someone who might mm -hmm. be eligible for something, call me and let's ask me. It never hurts to, to ask. Uh, or even with filing a claim with the VA, many times I'll say, well, all they can do is say no and you're no worse off. We'll, we'll buy the postage stamp for you and you're no worse off than, than you were before. So I would encourage people to call me and let's talk about your situation. If you think you might be eligible as a veteran or a surviving spouse for something from VA, and my number is 790-5623 and I'm in the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 8 to 12, but leave a message and I'll call you back. Veterans Day Parade? Well, uh, the, not the veteran. Memorial the Memorial Day. Day service, May 26. That's Monday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, precisely 10 a.m. We we start on time, and it will run around 30 to 45 minutes. I highly encourage everyone to come out and participate. Most of the veterans will be there at 9:15 to 9:30, shaking and, hands, and, and many will be there at uh, 30 minutes after it's over, shaking right. hands and rearranging the government and and that sort of thing. Having a good time, showing respect for the men and women that wore their uniform to protect our country. Ken Marshall, great to have you here. Thanks for everything you do. Look forward to seeing you down on the Memorial Day services and ceremony here in Franklin at Five Points. Thank you. We'll see you there. Again, I'm Rogers Anderson. We'll see you around at another time. Have a good day. This is my book, Black Beauty. I chose this book because I really like the illustrations. And my favorite part is when Black Beauty finds a new owner and he gets hurt, but the owner takes good care of him. And you could find this book at school or at a store. <laughs> Whoop, hey, hey.